This is part four of a series of videos about parametric curves. I've been saying that I've been aiming these at students both who have Mathematica and who don't have Mathematica, though if you've watched parts zero through three, you might have gotten the impression that you really need Mathematica to get benefit out of this. But I, I hope even if you don't have Mathematica that you do get benefit. And I want to try to um, make that a little bit more explicit in this video by focusing on some mathematical details that I've kind of glossed over to some extent. So we want to tie up those things in this videos. In, the, in this video, I want to introduce you to a new Mathematica command, so we'll go back to Mathematica, called parametric plot. That would be the most common way to plot parametric curves in Mathematica. So far I've done it more focused on plotting individual points, but parametric plot will be a way to get Mathematica to plot points without having to think about what was called the table command. Um, I want to use some notation that's in the second edition of Multivariable Calculus by John Rogoski. But this notation um, is it's pretty widely used, so um, it'll, you'll get use out of it even if you don't have that book. In the last video, I tried to highlight uh, this basketball example about why parametric equations and curves are useful. In this video, very quickly, I want to highlight this second thing here, planetary motion. You see a bunch of code there. What happens when we run this code? We get a little toy planetary, a little toy solar system. Um, that follows, so to speak, Kepler's laws in a way that is accurate if you know that anything about Kepler's laws. Manipulate was used there. I introduced the command manipulate in the last video, and it is used here. You can see it right here with an animation parameter, the animation parameter being called s down here. S. Uh, but I also used another command that I haven't used yet called parametric plot. And that's what I want to focus on now. But before we do that, I want to focus on some mathematical details of our main foundational example here. Um, I want to bring in some mathematical notation. What we've really got here are two functions, two linear functions. And now I'm typing this in text. This is not Mathematica code. This function gives the x-coordinate as a function of time. And g of t equals 4t minus 1. That's a formula for a function that gives the y-coordinate, the second coordinate, as a function of time of the person who's moving here. Here's the situation. Look, look at this. We, we're using parametric equations to model the motion of a person traveling between two points in one second. These two functions, thought of as a system, of equations, if you will, do give the x and y coordinates as functions of time. And maybe you want to even specify that more precisely by writing x equals here and y equals there. So x equals f of t is negative 3t plus 2, and y equals g of t gives four, equals 4t minus 1 give you the x and y coordinates, the first and second coordinates as functions of time. We can then create another function call it c of t, which is a function that takes a time, t, and gives you the corresponding point, f of t, comma g of t, where the person is as time goes by. I'm using point notation here. Notice the parentheses around the f of t, comma g of t. Notice the comma between the f of t and g of t. This is a moving point. You want to visualize this. You want to conceptualize it as a moving point. This gives the moving point as a function of time. And this is not just notation. In Mathematica, you can use this to redo the animation we've just done in a different way. Once I've got these functions entered, I can create a new function down here using the same kind of notation for entering a function in Mathematica. C of t, notice the underscore. That's essential to put the underscore there when you're defining a function. Colon equals, the colon is not essential, but I always use it. And note how I type this here. f of t comma g of t 
inside curly braces and separated by a comma. Don't use parentheses here. You want to use curly braces on Mathematica, in this case, to represent the parentheses that are up here. This gives the point as a function of time. I can enter this. And watch, I can even evaluate this at different points. For example, I can plug in 0.5. I haven't shown this to you before, but I could plug in 0.5 here to evaluate this at, the, at t equals 0.5. What I should get is this particular list right up here. The output of the function should be the point whose coordinates are 0 0.5 comma 1. And I do. Okay? I can also find the starting point, c of 0 is the starting point 2 comma negative 1, the, c of, the ending point c of 1 is the ending point negative 1, 3, look back up here, going from 2 negative 1 to negative 1, 3 in 1 second. Time equals 0 is where you start, time equals 1 is where you end. And in this code right here I can get rid of this, I can replace this all with c of 0.1 times n instead. And it should still animate the motion, like we see here. Whoops, I must have made a mistake. Let's see. Oh yeah, I made b go from zero to one hundred. I made a point zero one. There we go. This will work. There's the animation of the motion. Let's speed it up a bit. I can use this new function c that I've created to do that. All right, now onto parametric plot. In reality, we would never plot a parametric curve in the future in this way, by plotting a bunch of points using list plot and table. Instead, we would use something called parametric plot as the basic command to plot parametric curves. What is the parametric curve? I can type it as c of t. I need a comma, and then I need to say what t goes between. t goes between 0 and 1. Here's how I type that. This is the syntax to get a basic plot of this parametric curve. There it is. Notice Mathematica picked the particular window for me. Just like before, I can change the plot range to pick the window myself. Just copying and pasting that here. There we go. We can, it looks like the axes are by default the same scale here, so we probably wouldn't need an aspect ratio automatic. I can do a plot style red, for example, I can make it red. I can make it thicker by adding a thick in here. There we go. There's the parametric curve. But what's, what's wrong? We don't see the motion. That's what's wrong. Let me get the axes in here as well. Where's the motion? Well, it's because we haven't animated it. We just see the actual path that was traced. In order to animate it, we need to manipulate again. What is going to be my animation parameter? Well, before it was b was how many points have I plotted? Well, plus 1, since I was starting b at 0. Now b is going to be the right endpoint of my interval that I'm plotting this over. I'm going to put a b here instead of a 1. And inside the manipulate, um, after the parametric plot, which is this part here, put a comma, then say what b does. b goes from 0 to 1. And again, as I mentioned in the last video, manipulate assumes b is a continuous parameter, not discrete. This will not, we will not see this plot a bunch of points. We'll see this as a continuous line when we see it plotted in an animation. Oops, I made a mistake somewhere. Let's see. Oh, yes. That was, a, I'm glad that happened because just a little quirk here. I can't put the starting value b to be the same as this number here. So instead of 0 here, I'll put 0 0.0001. There we go. Glad that happened. And now we see the animation, and again, we can speed it up. OK, so we see this animated as one continuous line, one continuous motion. And that's the ideal way we want to do this in the future here now in Mathematica.